the next access control method is token passing okay so before going to token passing i would like to give some basics so till now we have been measuring time the delays in terms of seconds isn't it so we said that propagation time is this much time and uh, transmission time is these many milliseconds microseconds sometimes they'll even uh, try to measure time in bits okay so how could time no time be measured in bits is sometimes they'll say that the time taken to or the propagation delay in this wire is 10 bit times 10 bit times the uh, propagation delay in this wire is 10 bit times right so what does it mean by saying that the propagation delay is 10 bits is by the time i start you know by the time one bit reaches from one end of the wire to the other end of the wire i could transmit 10 bits that is the meaning of propagation delay uh, of uh, 10 bits which means uh, whenever they give you in 10 i mean in terms of bits it means that it is actually the time taken to transmit 10 bits by the time you finish transmitting 10 bits i could trans i could propagate one bit from one end of the one end to the other end right so if the time is given in bits always remember that you should convert it into transmission delay for that bits in order to get into seconds so how can i con find out the transmission delay for 10 bits you have to divide the transmission delay by bandwidth right so so one thing worth noting here is if the time is given in seconds it is fine if the time is given in bits if the time is given in bits it is also called as bit times in order to convert that bits to seconds you have to divide it with bandwidth okay and second thing is sometimes time will be given in meters so how how to convert the time given in meters into time time for seconds is sometimes they say that propagation delay is equal to 100 meters so what do they mean by saying that the propagation delay is 100 meters is by the time you know it is the time taken for one signal to cross 100 meters so again given the time in meters if you have to convert it into seconds you have to divide it with velocity therefore if the time is given in meters if you have to convert it to seconds you have to divide it with velocity right and you know you can you might have to convert the seconds into bits and seconds into meters vice versa so sometimes given the time in seconds you might want to convert it into bits how to convert the seconds into bits is multiply with bandwidth if i multiply seconds with bandwidth i'm going to get bits how to convert seconds to meters is multiply with velocity right so using these conversions you can convert seconds meters and bits into vice versa for example if uh, time is given in bits and if you have to convert it into meters sometimes they'll say that uh, how many meters is equivalent to 10 bit times which means they'll give you time in bits and they'll ask you to convert it into meters and what how could you do it first convert it to seconds by dividing with bandwidth and then convert it to meters by multiplying with velocity right so for example if the question is uh, how many meters is 10 bits equivalent to given that bandwidth is 4 mbps and velocity of the signal is 2 into 10 power 8 meters per second all right so how can you convert the bit time in bits to time in meters so how can you convert it so take the bits which means 10 bits right and then divide it with bandwidth so what is the bandwidth 4 mbps which means 4 into 10 power 6 and now you have to convert it to meters which means multiply with velocity so what is velocity 2 into 10 power 8 so what did you get from from this i think we got 2 into 10 power 9 divided by 4 into 10 power 6 so what is this this is 2000 divided by 4 2000 divided by 4 500 meters which means 10 bits is equivalent to 5 meters 
so that is you know in some questions you might need this understanding right so i uh, we shall see what is what is token passing with these basics now now let's see the token passing method so token passing means if you have a station see in the ethernet what was the problem i mean in csmscd we are just in csmscd right the problem is when more than one station gets the uh, tries to send the data there is collision and because of the collision the efficiency is going to fall down right now if you want to somehow stop the collision from happening then the next method is uh, token passing method so in token passing the advantage is we are not going to actually have collisions the reason is this so i'll take the ring topology token passing could be even discussed in bus topology too but then we don't have bus token bus in syllabus we have only token ring therefore i'm going to take the ring topology right so let us say this is the ring and all the uh, four four posts are connected to the ring now we use uh, token passing as the as the access control method method what happens is uh, the protocol says that there will be a special packet called token which will be revolving in the ring and if any station holds the token then only that station is supposed to transmit the data therefore if there is only one token present then how many stations can transmit the data only one station right so if there is one token present with this station then this station will transmit the data right and moreover the token ring operates in unidirectional which means data can go in only one direction it cannot go in both the directions so since there is only one token in the network only one station can transmit and the data will be going only in one direction therefore there are no collisions why because only one station is transmitting the data right and uh, this is about uh, token passing if you know in order to understand more about token passing and in order to analyze the efficiency i i need some terminology here so one terminology is this if i leave a bit one bit somewhere in the ring for this one bit to take the entire round and come back to the same point what is the total time taken which means if i leave a bit on the link here if the bit has to take the entire rotation and come back to the same point what is the total time you know required for that so that is called ring latency ring latency so ring latency is nothing but time taken by a bit to start from a location in the uh, token ring and again and take the entire round and come back to the same point is called ring latency now how to find out the ring latency is so if you observe this the ring has to the bit has to actually make a physical journey from this point to this point and again from this point to this point this point is one which means the ring has to actually take the entire round of the distance it has to physically you know travel the uh, ring right let us say the distance of the ring is or the length of the ring is d then ring latency is d by v why because the bit has to actually rotate in the ring that is first point plus the bit has to be read by every station and it has to be kept on the other side which means at every station the bit will be held for some time okay so if there are n stations every station is going to hold the bit for at least b bit times so this b is nothing but bit delay that is the time for which uh, every station is going to hold the bit before transmitting it on to the other side why because the bit is going to go and sit in the buffers of this and again this has to physically transmit it on to the other side therefore uh, the total time is d by v plus n into b where b is uh, the bit delay right now if b is given in bit times and this is in seconds isn't it d by v is in seconds and b is in bits which means this is in bits and this is in seconds right so then ring latency is seconds plus bits which is unmatched therefore either convert both of them to bits or convert both of them to seconds how can i convert both of them to seconds is take this uh, d by v it is d by v seconds plus n into b divided by bandwidth so this is in seconds now and this is in seconds now so ring latency is given in seconds now right 
So if I want to convert the entire thing into bits, so if you have to convert the entire thing into bits, you have to take this seconds and multiply with bandwidth, which means d by v in seconds multiply with bandwidth is going to give me bits plus n into b. This is already in bits. Now this is in bits and this is in bits. So entire thing is in bits. So you could either convert everything into seconds or into bits. So first thing is ring latency is nothing but uh, the time taken by a bit to cover the entire ring and come back to the same point. And next thing is I need one more definition, uh, I, I mean terminology where in order to analyze the entire efficiency, I wanted the cycle time, right? So let us say this is the token ring. containing four stations okay now I want to see what is the time taken what is the cycle time so how can I measure the cycle time is assume that a token is here currently inside the wire here okay now I could say that there is a cycle if this token starts from this point and again come back to the same point then I will say that it has taken one cycle so why should I take this as cycle is see there are various ways either you can say a token starting from here to here is a cycle because it repeats it repeats it repeats or you can say that a token starting from this point and taking the entire round is also a cycle the reason is even this repeats again it repeats again it repeats therefore if you can analyze in one cycle the useful time you can find out the efficiency that is why I am going with this definition. So according to me, cycle time is, see this, this is not a standard for everyone. So according to me, cycle time is, because this is easier for me to analyze, right? Cycle time is time taken by this token to start at a point in the ring and again come back to the same point is nothing but the cycle time, right? So in order to find out the cycle time, I need one more terminology called token holding time token holding time is whenever a station takes the token it will take the token and it will hold the token for some time why it will hold the token and transmit the data and after that it will release the token therefore every station is going to hold the token for a time called token holding time okay so THT is token holding time so token holding time is nothing but the time for which any station could hold a token right now in terms of token holding time i want to define the cycle time so what is cycle time is the time taken by the token to start at a point in the ring and again come back to the same point is called cycle time so in this case what will be the cycle time so in order to analyze the cycle time you could think of uh, either the first bit of the token starting from here and reaching the same point or last bit of the token starting from here and reaching the same point or for that matter you can take any other bit starting from some point and reaching the same point okay now if this bit has to reach from this point and again no start from this point and reach the same point uh, you could you could see that it has to actually cover the entire length of the ring which means to cycle time is d by v where d is the distance and v is the velocity plus why d by v because it has to the token has to cover the entire ring whose distance could be d meters d by v plus if there are n stations here in the token in the token ring if there are n stations every station is going to hold the token at least for some time that is called token holding time plus n into token holding time right so this is the total cycle time cycle time is nothing but d by v plus n into token holding time now what is this d by v we know that d by v is already tp propagation delay okay now what is efficiency efficiency is useful time upon cycle time right so cycle time we know now I have to find out the useful time what is useful time useful time is time taken to actually transmit the packets now see this in one cycle which means by the time this token starts from here and again come back to the same point which is one cycle how many stations would have held the token 
all the n stations would have held the token at least once exactly once isn't it see every station is going to see the token exactly once in one cycle of the token therefore every station will send will transmit exactly one packet okay see since the token is going to be seen by every station exactly once every station is going to uh, see the token hold the token exactly once and transmit the data exactly once isn't it therefore in one cycle of the token how many packets will be transmitted so in one cycle of the token n packets will be transmitted why n, n hosts are going to see the token and hold the token and transmit one packet each therefore okay why only one packet the restriction is that every station can transmit only one packet let us let us make some assumptions here first assumption is every station should send one packet and exactly one packet and we assume that every station is having data to send it doesn't it means that if a station has seen the token it will definitely send one packet right so in that case if this token is seen by n stations then n packets will be transmitted one by each one right so in order to send in order to transmit n packets n into tt time is required again the assumption is all the packets are of same size in order to simplify the uh, analysis right and what is uh, what is cycle time cycle time is tp plus n into tht right therefore efficiency in token ring is n into tt divided by tp plus n into tht now in order to find out the efficiency in terms of uh, 1 upon 1 plus a kind of formula I want to find out what is the token holding time which means how long is this uh, is every station going to hold the token so now the token holding time depends on the strategy which we are going to use there are two types of strategies which are generally used in token passing I'll show you both these strategies and in terms of both these strategies we shall analyze the efficiency okay we shall see it now so token passing has uh, actually two strategies so one strategy is called delayed delayed token reinsertion and other strategy is called early token reinsertion so we have these two uh, token reinsertion strategies uh, popularly available uh, we shall see each one and then analyze it so first of all you know you should you should remember this we got that efficiency of a token passing system is in one cycle i can transmit n packets n into tt upon uh, so what is the cycle time cycle time we found out as it is tp plus n into token holding time right so now if I have to analyze the efficiency of a token passing efficiency depends on token holding time and token holding depends on strategy so first now let's see uh, the strategy of delayed token reinsertion which means I am talking about delayed token reinsertion so the strategy is like this say we have four stations connected I'll explain the strategy first and then we shall see what happens okay now how does it work is let us say token token is with station number station number one station number two station number three station number four right then every station will take it take the token if, the, if it has to transmit the data so one station number one takes the token number one token and then it will transmit the data packet which means data packet will be transmitted and wait for the data packet to take the entire round come back and after it comes back uh, the packet the token will be released okay so this is called delayed token reinsertion so understand this token is held data is transmitted and we will wait for the data the last bit to take the entire round and come back to the uh, sender and then we release the token therefore how long are we going to hold the token here so in this case of uh, delayed token reinsertion we are going to hold the token token holding time is equal to how long so we are going to transmit the data packet and we are waiting for the last bit of the data packet to come back to us right 
So for transmitting the data packet, the time taken is TT plus the last bit of the packet has to take the entire round and come back, which is nothing but ring latency, right? So this is equal to token holding time. Now we know that we have already seen that ring latency is nothing but trans propagation delay plus n into bit delay. So for the sake of simplicity, assume that B, this has to be taken into consideration, but just to simplify the matters, I'm assuming that bit delay is zero. Then what is the token holding time in this case? Token holding time is nothing but transmission time plus propagation time. This is the token holding time in the case of delayed token reinsertion, right? So <clears throat> now we shall substitute this in, in the formula and find out what is the efficiency. Now the efficiency of delayed token reinsertion is n into tt divided by tp plus n into tt plus tp. Now divide numerator and denominator, both both ends are capital N only and number of packets. Okay, so divide numerator and denominator with n into tt. If I divide numerator and denominator n into tt, I get 1 upon 1 plus n plus 1 by n into a, where a is tp by tt okay so this is the efficiency i got efficiency of delayed token reinsertion is 1 upon 1 plus n plus 1 by n into a so how did i get it because token holding time is nothing but in this case of uh, delayed token reinsertion token holding time is every station is going to take the token hold the token transmit the data and wait for the data to propagate that is why token holding time is equal to tt plus tp right so we got, uh, you know, this is how if we can, we could get the efficiency. Now let's see how to analyze the early token reinsertion now. So now let's see early token reinsertion. So early token reinsertion is this. If I have four stations like this, okay. Now, if there is a station, that station will take the token and uh, let us say these stations are 1, 2, 3, 4. Now the station will take the token and release the data packet, data packet 1 and without waiting for the data packet to come back to you, it will immediately release the token, which means token number 1, packet number 1 is followed by token immediately, right? And now this token this packet will be seen by uh, station number two so packet number one will be kept on the other side and it will hold the token and it will it will transmit its own packet packet number two and then it will release token right and now station number three it will see the token number one token number one put it on the other side uh, pack, sorry data packet number one put it on the other side and data packet number two put it on the other side and then it is going to see the token, hold the token and it is going to transmit the packet 3 and then release the token, right? And coming to station number 4, it will see the packet number 1 first, put the packet number 1 on the other side, packet number 2, put the packet number 2 on the other side, packet number 3, put it on the other side and hold the token, release the station data packet 4 and release the token, right? And now this is going to be seen by this. So it, in token ring, remember that always, even in the previous case also, it is the responsibility of the sender to remove its own uh, data packet, which means if data packet number one is uh, uh, being sent by station one, then station one is supposed to remove it from the link. Otherwise, this data packet one will continuously revolve. The reason why a receiver has to again send back the packet even after seeing it is the same reason. In LAN, we don't have uh, acknowledgements. Even in CSMS CD also, we don't have acknowledgements. And even in token ring also, we don't have acknowledgements, right? So since we don't have acknowledgement, every packet has to be circulated in the entire ring and it should, they should come back to the sender. That is the first reason. 
and second reason is this is a broadcast channel in broadcast channel any packet which is sent by any station has to be seen by every other stations because there could be some broadcasting messages right therefore only the sender is supposed to re remove a uh, packet so now packet number one will be seen by station number one it will take it and remove it from the station from the ring and now packet number two will be seen by station number one so packet number two will be kept on the other side and then three and four three and four will be kept on the other side and now the token token will be held and now it will release the new packet from station number one so let us say station number this one is the new packet from station number one and then it is going to release token right and now the same thing will happen here this this first packet 2 will be removed by this station 2 the reason is it doesn't belong to uh, the reason is that uh, this stage it is the actual packet sent by the sender and th and therefore it is the responsibility of the sender to remove it and now 3 4 1 will be kept on the other side 3 4 1 will be kept on the other side and token will be held and now it will take the produce the next second packet and then release the token and coming to this third one this third packet is actually sent by the third station therefore this packet will be removed by station 3 and now 412 will be kept on the other side 412 will be kept on the other side and then the token will be held by the station and it will retrans it will transmit the new packet from station number 3 which is nothing but packet number 3 right and then it will release the token t right and now 4123 now fourth packet will be seen by this and deleted by this and it will see 123 in this order therefore 123 will be transmitted onto the other side and token will be held and fourth packet will be transmitted and then the token right therefore if you see this the entire ring is now actually containing more than one packet at the same time without any collision because they are going one after the other if you see the previous one a delayed token reinsertion in the previous case if i have four stations like this if i have four stations in the delayed token reinsertion what happened was station a token will be held and a packet will be generated I mean transmitted and the packet has to take the entire round and come back to the station then only token will be released now the token will be seen by the next host and then packet number 2 will be released and now the packet number 2 has to take the entire round and come back right therefore at any point of time there will be only one packet in the ring in case of delay token reinsertion but in case of early token reinsertion at any point there can be more than one packet which is nothing but here we have nearly four packets so you can consider this as a kind of stop and wait and you can consider this as a kind of sliding window protocol see it is not exact you know actually the uh, same i am just uh, correlating just for the correlation i am saying it so it is similar to only one packet is sent in the entire time and we are sending n packets in the entire time so obviously efficiency in case of uh, early token reinsertion should be more let's just see and compare it so in this case what is happening is a token a token is held by a station only for the time to transmit a packet after transmitting a packet the token is going to be released isn't it therefore therefore in case of early token reinsertion the token holding time early token reinsertion the token holding time is going to be tt only in case of uh, delay token reinsertion token holding time was we transmit the packet and wait for the packet to come back therefore the to token uh, token holding time was tt plus tp but in case of uh, uh, early token reinsertion we are going to hold a token only for the transmission time so in place of uh, token holding time if you substitute tt what do i get is it is nothing but n into tt divided by tp plus n into tt so that equal to if you divide numerator and denominator with n into tt i get 1 upon 
1 plus a by n where a is tp by tt this is the efficiency of early token reinsertion so what is the efficiency of delay token reinsertion efficiency of delay token reinsertion was 1 plus 1 by 1 plus n plus 1 into a by n this is the efficiency of delay token reinsertion and this is the efficiency of early token reinsertion you just compare them you can see that the denominator is more in case of uh, delay token reinsertion therefore efficiency of delay token reinsertion is less so which one is better in terms of efficiency early token reinsertion was better right in terms of reliability which means since there are many packets going in the at the same time if something happens in the ring all the packets will be lost but here since only one packet is going if anything happens in the ring only one packet will be lost in case of reliability delayed is better in case of efficiency early is better so if nothing is given in the exam always go for early token reinsertion as the default case if you don't see the answer using this formula you can change the formula but then they are going to clearly specify whether it is early token reinsertion or delayed token reinsertion okay so problems in this will be they will tell you that uh, there are 10 number of stations and they will give you the propagation delay and transmission delay and then they will ask you efficiency efficiency of early and efficiency of delayed so this is the derivation and uh, you can use these formulas in the exam okay so now let's see the next uh, access control method.